India is one country. But when we compare South India and North India, the difference in development, education, infrastructure and income is impossible to ignore. Better roads, better cities, better schools, better jobs. South India is ahead. But why is this gap so large? In this video, we are going to compare North and South India using real data, not opinions, not politics, not stereotypes. We'll look at human development, education and literacy, economic growth, industry and technology, population pressure, governance and policy. And at the end, we'll answer one big question. Can North India catch up in the next 20 years? Let's start. When we look at education, the difference is clear in modern data. Based on recent national surveys like NFHS 5 and NSO 2022 estimates, most southern states have literacy levels between 80% and 90%, with Kerala still around 95%, the highest in the country. In contrast, major northern states such as Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh are generally in the 70% range and Bihar remains around 62 to 64% among the lowest. This shows that southern states achieved broader schooling and literacy much earlier, while parts of North India continue to face challenges related to school access, dropout rates and educational infrastructure. The gap remains significant even today. When we compare economic output, the difference becomes even clearer. Southern states have higher per person income because their economies are more diversified with strong industry, services, IT and manufacturing. According to the latest 2023-24 state GDP data, states like Tamil Nadu and Karnataka have a per capita income in the range of 2.2 lakh rupees to 2.75 lakh rupees per year and Kerala is around 2.13 lakh rupees. In contrast, Large northern states such as Uttar Pradesh and Bihar are around 85,000 rupees to 1.1 lakh rupees, which is less than half. This gap exists because southern states transitioned earlier into modern industries like information technology, automobile manufacturing, electronics, pharmaceuticals and services, which generate higher paying jobs. Cities such as Bengaluru, Hyderabad and Chennai emerged as global tech and manufacturing hubs, attracting both domestic and international investment. On the other hand, a significant part of the northern economy still depends on agriculture, which grows slowly and offers lower earning potential, especially when population density is high. Population pressure also plays a major role. Northern states have higher population growth, meaning more people competing for the same number of jobs, schools and resources. This slows development and increases strain on infrastructure. In contrast, population growth in most southern states is moderate or stable, making it easier to improve living standards and deliver public services. Urban development also differs. Southern cities have grown in a more planned and service-oriented way, while many northern cities expanded rapidly and informally, creating challenges in transportation, housing and public utilities. So the difference between South and North India is not about culture, language or identity. It comes down to three core factors. Number one, earlier and stronger investment in education. Number two, more diversified, modern and high value economies. Number three, lower population pressure and more manageable urban growth. These choices created better human development, higher incomes and more stable long-term progress in the South. But the story is not fixed. If northern states increase investment in education, skill development and industry, the gap can narrow in the next 10 to 20 years. The potential is there. What matters now are policy decisions.